Right then, we're back in Max, and we're going to make some blades of grass on sheets like this, and uh, we'll make clumps so that we can place them in Unreal in groups, uh, which will make them a bit cheaper to do because there's only one transform, and uh, yeah. So I've got my plane, and it's uh, I'm going to make it 100 by 100, which basically means when we place the grass on here, it will be 50 centimeters tall, which is still pretty tall, but um, it's probably going to be tall enough what we need. The grass always needs to be a bit taller than it would be in real life because um, it's with the height of the player looking down at it and looking into the distance, it's, you want it to kind of show. Um, really small stuff doesn't really show that well. So. Anyway, I made this plane. I put four divisions in it because I'm going to use these divisions to basically cut out the grass. Uh, so if we go with that, I'm just going to convert that to an interval poly. And I, I'm going to find a spare map slot that will do. And I'm just going to go and find uh, my grass mask. So I'm going to select my grass mask and then hit open. Uh, make sure we can see it. And there we go. Obviously, this looks pretty jazzy uh, because it's just a series of masks rather than an actual texture. Which, if you're not familiar with that concept, um, this will make no sense until you see it in Unreal. But we don't need those, so I'm going to get rid of them. And basically, what I need to do is to start to uh, move these points so that we basically get rid of all this dead space. Um, this is basically uh, overdraw, which we don't want. Um, so the when this is in, goes into Unreal, it's still gonna it, this is all gonna be alpha out, but it starts to deal with it and it, it makes it expensive. So because uh, it has to use alpha test to work out whether it can be seen through or not and then what needs to be drawn behind it and all that stuff. So uh, we want to get rid of as much of it as we can within reason. So I'm going to turn on preserve UVs and in the front view I'm going to start. So preserve UVs basically means we can move these points and it shouldn't distort um, this too much. So I'm going to go with something like that, and their uh, quads, so yeah, we're fine. Um, okay. Right then, so it's a bit flat, and we need it so that when we can see it from different places, it'll have some volume, so we need to basically bend it out a little bit. Um, so. We can't use an FFD for this because it's so flat. It's just not going to work. So we have to use a bend modifier. Um, these can be a bit fiddly. We just kind of have to figure out uh, which is the right axis. There you go. Put it on. So there you go. That's basically we can see more of it as we go around. Now, hopefully, we stick the bend modifier on top of that. Grab all of these. And we can bend it that way too. A little bit. So, I've got this now. I'm going to uh, make some changes to it. Uh, First being that, um, I mean we could do this in real, but uh, we'd be as well doing it here because it will go across all of them, um, is to add some vertex colour to it. Uh, we're going to use the vertex colour to basically use the wind uh, uh, node in Unreal 4 
to basically make this thing sway about. And the way we do that is basically using vertex color to control which bits stay still and which bits can move. So uh, the way we do that is if we go into the modifier list and find vertex paint, then we can just switch off the texture, switch off vertex, switch on vertex paint. And we've basically got to paint in red to the red channel. So we're just using this bit along the top. So at the bottom we're going to have zero, a value of zero, which will be the bit where um, we go on the paintbrush and we can just start to paint. Um, so this will be just paint the whole of this bottom one. This will be where there's no movement at all. And at the top, we're going to have 100% movement. So, paint this one red. And then this one, which is what? Fade the way down. So go for something around. 100 maybe. Which one's going to darker? Just to check, I've got that at the bottom again. Nice and dark. That's it. It's all a value of 1. So that'll create a bit of variation in our object. So basically this stuff won't move and this stuff will move the most. That's it really. Yeah, but if we do it on this one now then hopefully it will translate across all of them. So if we switch the vertex paint back off and use this thing and then go back to what we were doing, that's fine. And the other thing we're going to do is um, we're going to bend the normals as well. Um, the difference in angle between these and these will mean that you're always going to get a hard line you know, where the shading's different, the lighting's different. You're always going to get a hard line along the surface, which means that no matter what you do with your grass, that's never going to quite look right. And I'm sure you've seen enough games out there that look rubbish because of that. So, um, and we have to do the same with trees as well, um, is we just need to bend the normals so that they match the floor and it's that easy to do basically get rid of him get rid of him we just add uh, edit normals there you go If you're using cranes and stuff like that, you don't need to do this. So, if I remember rightly, move them. Take them left-hand side. Probably it, surely. Yeah, so they're all now pointing up. Okay, now we're done. So I'm just going to push that off to one side and make another one. And convert it to interval poly. Just make another one of these. I'm just going to switch off the FFD and the bend so it gets back to being perfect. And it goes back to being flat again, which is useful for us. And we'll convert it to an editable poly. And we'll make sure I've got preserved UVs on. And I'm just going to try to split this one up now. So I'm going to go there. I'm going to take these two and these four and I'm going to detach. Ok, 
Okay. Got those. And we've got those. Uh, that's like that. We can probably show you these. We can go around to there. Maybe push that one. These are quite small, so I'm just basically going to bend these to zero. So we've got three pieces now. Well, let's do what we need them to do. And what we need to do now is start arranging them.